go ahead and take your face plate off of your outlet. Sometimes on the electrical box, you can see right around the edge and see which side the stud is on. You can also use a magnetic stud finder. So for you guys, just for a visual, I will go ahead and put some painter's tape right on the side. And I am finding another drywall screw on the other side of the cold air return. I'm gonna go ahead and trip my breaker, turn this off, and then we're gonna pull this out to get access to the wires and see if we're only fed by one piece of Romex or if we have two pieces of Romex already coming into this electrical box. I'd undo all these and then we'll position our new box and get everything tied together. So I'm going to place mine offset with the center point at 11 and a half inches. Additionally, you'll want to get a measurement from the floor to the top of your electrical box, which is 15 and a half inches for me. So we'll take those dimensions of 15 and a half from the floor surface and 11 and a half from the edge of the wall. And that's going to be right at the top of this old work box. I use my torpedo level to make sure the box is level. Now you can use an oscillating tool here. I do prefer the oscillating tool, but I also wanna show this jab saw, which works really well and is a very inexpensive tool to buy. Working it through, and they should have a perfect rectangle cut out. From the existing box to our new box, we're just using 12-2 Romex. This is a new work box. This box is exactly what's going on here in the wall. And then I'm just gonna feed this 12-2 up through that hole and then into the wall cavity. So now with the wire fed through, I'm now I've secured the old work box and you just wanna make sure that you're gonna have six inches from when you cut the yellow, yellow sheathing off, six inches of conductor and a minimum of three inches from the actual wall surface. That would be the amount of wire called out in code and so we have plenty here and we should be good to go. Now installing the outlet at this location, we'll cut that Romex right down the middle to pull off the sheathing and we'll be using a commercial grade Legrand outlet. This one I really like because I use back wiring on the neutral and for the hot as well. Very quick to wire these up and a very secure connection. Now let's tie everything together and we'll start off by cutting that Romex to the length we need but I'll keep that extra for the pigtails that will go into this outlet we'll reinstall. Cutting off the sheathing we'll pull it back and then cut it off again just like we did on the old one stripping off our two conductors. Now I'll undo that ground because I'm going to bring everything together in five wire Wago 221 lever nuts. We'll do the same thing with the neutrals and the hots once we get the ground tucked away. And now all I have left after tucking everything back is one neutral, one hot, and the bare ground. So I can easily then wire up my commercial grade Legrand outlet and get it tucked back into place with the two mounting screws, making sure that the new outlet and this existing outlet both work. If I have the power back on, I just want to test it with my outlet tester. Two amber LEDs indicate we have power both on the existing and on our new location. So we're confirmed we're all back up and running with that new outlet powered and we're all good. 